นะเดี๋ยวอีกหนึ่งเดี๋ยวอีกหนึ่งเดี๋ยวอีกหนึ่งเดี๋ยวอีกหนึ่งเดี๋ยวอีกหนึ่งเดี๋ยวอีกหนึ
you can touch then to make it work. You actually press the whole thing down. Uh, a natty feature, not something I'm that interested in. Electronic parking brake is an unusual one. It doesn't come on when you stop the car. So when you pull up anywhere and you turn off the car, if you get out, it's easy to forget the parking brake isn't on. And it does auto release, but it requires quite a bit of force um, when you're driving away. You really do have to pop the clutch to make it do it. Uh, and it's powered by a six speed box, which isn't bad, although the gate's a bit big. Now, after all that information, I hope you are truly and well informed about the insignia. Let's go for a drive. So to drive the insignia hasn't changed all that much. Uh, it's still a very comfortable, executive feeling car. And comfort is a very big feature of the car because it is, on a long journey, insanely comfortable to drive this car. Um, another cool fact is that it has cruise control that's radar guided. So it's kind of called active cruise control. They've all got a name for this cruise control, but basically it amounts to being radar guided to any other metal object that's in front of it or any other object that's in front of it in general. And it's very easy to set. You set it like normal cruise control. So I know the speed limit along here is 80 kilometers an hour because I can see it in the signs, but in case I don't see it in the signs, it actually says it in the dashboard in front of me as well, just in case you missed the last one. Um, and to set the cruise control, you just press set. And I'll set it to 80 there. And you see there's an Audi in front of me. He may not go 80, but we'll do it. And it tells me to shift up on the dashboard when it wants to change gear. So that's how it deals with it not being an automatic. But if he slows down at any point in his journey, the car will slow down to suit him. Now, it takes a bit of faith, a little bit, uh, it can cause a little bit of panic in your brain when it starts to slow down first but actually it's driving the way we should be driving it's driving correctly so it slows down to match the speed of the car in front of it and then speeds up and it's time to overtake brilliant on a motorway not so hot in town it's always asked to change gears it's always running out of power uh, it was never meant for town it's meant for a big long autobahn motorway drive thankfully uh, leah carl's in the back seat there she is she, I have no choice, she's there, she's watching over my shoulder, make sure I'm not doing anything stupid. Because I'm usually doing something stupid. The car has brought us down to 80, as you can see, now it's speeding back up a bit, it's matched the speed of the car in front of me. So it's actually just sitting there, and as he goes into, we're just moving into Kildare Town. So as he gets into the town speeds, we get to drop his speed, the car will actually ask me to do the same thing. It's very clever. There is a lane keeping system on the car as well, but keeping the lane, it doesn't nudge the steering wheel it just bings and bongs when you get over to the edge now you see the car has slowed down to match the Audi speed we're doing 74 kilometers an hour I can feel the car slowly kind of speed up and slow down to try and match his speed because his, his speed is changing all the time and he can change the distance to that car as well so I can change I, I'm near now I can go far the car will slow down and try and get a bit more distance between me and him if you don't feel as uh, confident about it as I do it's a good system it's a decent system um, it also has a standard collision detection, which means that even if that's not turned on and somebody brakes too hard in front of me, the car lights up. It just bing, 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 bing to warn you that he's, he's at the braking more than you think. Technology-wise, there's no doubting that Opel is right up there with all the rest. The key for Opel is that it's, I think it's attempting to compete with the likes of Mercedes, Audi, uh, um, BMW, it's, it's trying to compete in that zone, and that zone is heavily dominated by brand names. It's a bit like some sort of, I don't know, a, a Japanese manufacturer of washing machines trying to compete here with a big brand name like Zanussi or, you know, Hoover or someone like that, that are already hugely established and are trying to break into that zone. There's no doubt that this is a very good company car. It's also a very capable family car, although there is a problem in the boot. It's been there for a long time. It's the suspension arms actually kind of stick up and create a sort of a shelf in the boot. When you're trying to put something flat in, it is a bit of a pain. It's not quite a flat floor back there. Overall, this is a remarkable difference between the last insignia I drove and this current model, this current refresh one. It is Opel have done what they should have done all along they've made the corrections they've listened to the criticism they've made the changes they've listened to people like me and modern journalists around the world saying what they think should be changed in the car i'm surprised they don't often listen to them a, a little bit more um 
the changes are good the changes are very welcome and the car is going to compete very well at the top end of the executive market and the lower end of uh, the likes of BMW or, or Audi or one of those kind of fleet cars that they have where the, the lower end of their stuff like a 520 manual or a, a, an Audi A6 manual or an E-Class that's a big truck <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to get around that it's a big truck with uh, an indicator on to the left I'm just going to he's just going to stop there and pull up here in the middle of the road that's it as far as he's going I overall I like it it's totally different feel of a car I would con it would certainly be considered if I was looking at saloon model cars generally there is an estate version of this it's, it's uh, we're going to have a test of that later on in the year uh, it just adds a, a much bigger boot to the whole thing which makes it a, well, a different looking car as well but um, as technology goes and as comfort goes it's kind of right up there when it comes to that sort of thing as a standard family ha family uh, saloon mm, I wouldn't be so gone on it because the biggest 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 feature is missing from the boot and you know I harp on about it all the time in all the videos but there's no shopping bag hooks <laughs> and that drives me bananas when you've got a big bag of shopping you put it into the boot and it just falls all over the place and you might think it's unimportant until that moment where you put two litres of milk into the boot, it's in a bag, no, ba no shopping bag hooks, and when you're finished and you're getting out of the car, it's after spilling, because it fell over on its side and slid about the boot and hit itself against something, and you've got two litres of milk in your boot. Um, see what happens then. But until the next time, I shall see you on the far side. For the fuck of it, if you want to use it. Again. Was that on? Yeah. Are you filming? No, I got it. Deadly, deadly. So you just have a little bit of.